For a very long time humans have imagined what life may be like in other worlds. Thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful telescope in existence, that question can finally be answered. While observing the closest star system to us, Proxima Centauri, which is only four light years away, scientists have noticed some peculiar anomalies from one of the planets in the system, Proxima b. These anomalies, called artificial lights, have puzzled the best minds in the scientific community. But what are they? Do these lights suggest the existence of intelligent life on the planet? Join us as we explore James Webb's terrifying discovery of city lights that change everything. The only life that we are currently aware of is on Earth. Since the beginning of civilization, people have questioned whether there is life elsewhere in the universe. To carry out such an interstellar search, American astronomers Jill Tata and Thomas Pearson launched the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence SETI, project in 1984. The nonprofit's objective is to gather spaceborne radio signals. Radio waves can travel farther and are therefore more likely to be detected by the 42 radio telescopes that make up the unique Allen Telescope Array in the Californian Cascade Mountains because they are less dispersed or absorbed than other types of radiation. But in the past 30 years, no verifiable alien signal has been discovered. After that, the James Webb Space Telescope's successful launch aided in the quest. In order to examine a range of distances and undiscovered planets orbiting far-off stars, the largest telescope in the world, which is floating roughly a million miles from Earth and outfitted with incredibly sensitive detectors, will be used. Twenty years ago, there were no known planets outside those in our solar system, but since then, more than 4,000 more planets, also referred to as exoplanets, have been discovered orbiting other stars. According to NASA, the universe may contain trillions of exoplanets. The earliest signs of life beyond our solar system may be found in extraterrestrial plant life. The Galileo spacecraft turned its equipment back toward Earth when it was en route to Jupiter and found a definite indication of the presence of plants. The instrument detected the vegetation red edge, a mix of red and infrared lights reflected by plants. For instance, a planet like Earth that is covered in a jungle should have a strong and easy-to-detect red edge. The JWST will measure the red edge of far-off Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around stars. They could be important signs of life in the exoplanet atmosphere. When sunlight crosses a planet's star, the JWST may be able to detect it as it enters its atmosphere. The light's missing wavelengths would then be discovered via spectroscopy. Atoms and molecules in the atmosphere absorb specific wavelengths, creating a characteristic fingerprint that the JWST can recognize. This method may be used to determine the composition of the atmosphere and determine whether life is possible. It is likely that life could exist on Earth-sized planets with atmospheres similar to our own, with a predominance of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. By looking for elements that aren't usually present, one may be able to detect technological life. Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, generated for use in refrigeration and cleaning products, would probably be noticeable to aliens monitoring Earth's atmosphere from a distance. If the JWST found CFCs in planetary atmospheres, that would be a clear indication of civilization. Actually, life on exoplanets might not even remotely resemble life on Earth. Sometimes even earthly life, like extremophile species, can seem alien. This is a group of organisms, primarily bacteria, that can endure in environments where other living things would perish. Some humans can withstand heat up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, some can withstand colds as low as minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of them can survive in strong acids with pH levels below 3, while others can be found on Earth in places where we would not expect to find any life at all. But since planets like Earth are more likely to support life than planets with severe temperatures or acidic conditions, it could be a good idea to start with those first. Prime candidates could have temperatures that allow liquid water to exist on their surfaces and orbit a stable star. The classification for our Sun is a yellow G-type star. These stars are less common and typically have shorter lives in our universe. The likelihood of studying planets orbiting around red dwarf stars, which are more frequent and have lower luminosities and temperatures than the Sun, is higher. There is more time for the formation of life and evolution to produce complex life forms because these stars have longer lifespans. Significantly, around 40 light years away from Earth, the TRAPPIST-1 
one planetary system will be the subject of the JWST's first mission. It revolves around a calm red dwarf star with seven Earth-sized rocky planets. Three of the rocky planets in the so-called habitable zone might have liquid water on their surfaces. The Trappist, one star, in spite of having a much smaller and colder mass than our Sun, radiates light that is similar to that of Earth due to the close orbit of its planets. The best chance for humans to see city lights outside the solar system is Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star that is 4.25 light years from the Sun and our nearest star. Proxima is about 600 times fainter than the Sun, so a planet must be 20 times closer to it than Earth is to the Sun in order for it to support life based on liquid water. In August 2016, astronomers discovered a planet with one-third the mass in this habitable region, in a Goldilocks-like habitable zone where the light intensity is just right to melt water. Proxima b circles Proxima Centauri It's possible that Proxima b is an airless, lifeless planet given that it orbits its red dwarf star, Proxima Centauri, at a distance of only 4.6 million miles. The planet Proxima b is in a close orbit that exposes it to strong solar winds that can completely destroy its atmosphere. It also provides enough sunlight for temperatures and liquid water that are similar to those on Earth. Because of its close proximity to the star, Proxima b is thought to be tidally locked, always showing the same side to the star as the Moon does in reference to Earth. Proxima Centauri is about one-eighth the mass of the Sun and burns far less brightly than one might anticipate. For a planet so near to its star, just 5% of the Earth-Sun distance, it may be anticipated to be a red-hot cinder. Liquid water could easily exist on Proxima b as long as the planet has an atmosphere to heat in, since the total energy reaching it from the Sun is only 65% of what Earth receives. However, the planet is not especially friendly to life. It is most likely tidally locked, which means that it always faces the same direction toward the star and produces permanent day and night sides with significant temperature changes. The planet also receives 100 times as much high energy radiation as Earth does because of its proximity to Proxima Centauri, including X rays and ultraviolet light. Proxima b is also bombarded with high energy particles during star flare ups unless it has a shielding magnetic field similar to Earth. However, there are certain realistic conditions that could make it a pleasant world. Sadly, models suggest that the atmosphere of tidally locked planets may be susceptible to a rapid collapse due to the freezing out of volatile gases on the night side. A planet's atmosphere can be replenished by volcanic activity, and for planets with strong magnetic fields, this atmosphere is less likely to escape. Because we don't know anything about Proxima b's volcanic activity or magnetic field strength, we can't even guess whether or not the planet has an atmosphere. But since an atmosphere presupposes the existence of seas, and the two taken together presuppose the existence of life, we are desperate to know if Proxima b has a sophisticated civilization. It might have solar panels covering the day side to generate electricity to light and warm the night side, which would otherwise be too cold and dark for comfortable habitation. The discovery of Proxima b has triggered a race to determine if it transits its star's face as seen from Earth. These transits would let scientists determine the planet's size and mass, which would then enable them to determine its density. Knowing that would validate the planet's rocky makeup and provide information on the materials used to create those rocks. During a transit, starlight might disclose the nature of the planet by passing through its atmosphere. But the likelihood that the orbit will be in the right alignment for scientists to see a transit is merely 1.5%. The star's propensity to flare also complicates matters. Astronomer David Kipping of Columbia University says the star is tricky, as the star's heat causes a rocky planet to absorb sunlight and re-emit it as infrared light. However, rocky planets produce a distinct type of infrared radiation from stars like Proxima Centauri. Additionally, the James Webb Space Telescope was created specifically to study infrared light. Proxima b's infrared heat signature is the key to identifying the planet's atmosphere. Additionally, the infrared portion of the spectrum has a strong affinity for water. The JWST will be able to observe city lights on Proxima b's night side even if it were as faint as what our civilization currently employs on the night side of Earth. Webb could detect artificial illumination as long as it was constrained to a frequency band that is 1, 1,000 times narrower than the starlight. Proxima b's day side is heavily coated with solar panels because of its unique spectral edge's ability to reflect starlight. 
as Proxima B revolves around its star, day and night are identical. Cool evening lows follow daytime highs. The difference in temperature between day and night, however, depends on whether or not the planet has an atmosphere. Planets with atmospheres transfer heat from the star-facing side to the planet's opposite side. The planet with an atmosphere should have smaller temperature swings than a planet without one. The diameter of Proxima b would be nearly four times that of its star. To fill an image of Proxima b's surface that spans just one pixel, 400 pixels are needed. Researchers intend to make an effort to identify a transit and then use web to look for Proxima b in this manner. They can also use gravitational lensing to see if Proxima b transits its star and observe a slight temperature difference between the day and night sides. However, it is still worthwhile to continue monitoring Proxima b with JWST for signs of life. Due to its unique chemical makeup and small size, Proxima Centauri's planet Proxima b can still provide a wealth of fresh knowledge about the evolution of planets around red dwarf stars, even if it isn't an exact replica of Earth. Additionally, the James Webb Space Telescope's spectroscopic research on exoplanets will revolutionize our understanding of the physical and chemical makeups of those distant worlds. When the James Webb Space Telescope starts observing in 2021, astronomers will probably be concentrating on TRAPPIST-1 and Proxima b, two exoplanet systems that were previously discovered by the Hubble Space Telescope and NASA Spitzer Space Telescope. Although Proxima b and other exoplanets may be rocky planets with stable surfaces and atmospheres, JWST will be able to directly observe them to look for evidence of extraterrestrial life or technological activity. Scientists believe that, given their proximity to the Sun, Proxima b and TRAPPIST, one can potentially support extraterrestrial life.